Well, welcome to the Cat Washer Project, and uh, this time we're going to be looking at our cat deterrent. <coughs> yep, the cats hate this one. So let's have a quick look at the video to see what it actually does. Well, apologies for the uh, poor video. Uh, it sounds like another cat just got it. But as you can see, it may be a bit of a Heath Robinson looking design, but uh, this cat deterrent works. It's based on my previous version, Cat Washer 3. Uh, it's basically an Arduino powered uh, device. And what it consists of is a very simple system that uses a PIR movement sensor um, it's got a temperature detector in there, as I'll explain in a bit, and a relay that triggers a pump. That's about all there is to it. I built it because my wife kept moaning about cats leaving souvenirs on the grass, and when I built version 3 and got it working, we never had a problem again. So I actually put it away, but it seems that we have new cats on the block that are uneducated, and they're back. So uh, they are being educated. <coughs> So this is the whole setup. I've got all the details on the Digital Town website. There'll be a link below the video to give you all the information. So obviously I've got a power supply. In my case, I'm using a 12 volt plug-in supply. And uh, I'm quite fortunate that where I've got this positioned is next to my garage. So I've got the transformer inside in the dry. Do not put the mains voltage outside in the wet and there's basically a little 12 volt lead that comes out and plugs into the case of the uh, the cat washer inside there is a lm2596 buck converter that takes the 12 volts and reduces it down to about 7 volts to power an arduino nano while still leaving me a 12 volt supply that goes through a relay to a 12 volt car washer motor as you can imagine, I've got a PR, PIR sensor that tracks any movement. And you'll notice I've also got a TMP36 temperature sensor. Now, the reason for that is that living in the UK, the temperature can drop quite rapidly. And there was always the danger of things freezing up and then the pump trying to run while the uh, system is frozen. So if the temperature drops below four degrees, the system shuts itself down until it warms up again. So that's the circuit. Now let's have a quick look at the code. So here we are in the IDE and let's quickly whiz through this. So the pins I'm using, analog pin two is being used for the temperature pin. I've got digital pin eight uh, for the PIR sensor, pin nine for the relay, pin 13 for the built-in LED. I've got an unsigned long for my squirts timer. This uses a millis based timer. I've then got an integer for squirt state. Zero, the pump is off. One, someone's getting wet. Unsigned long, temp timer, because again, I'm using a millis timer to check the temperature. And I've got a float for the actual temperature. Obviously, I declare the digital pins, uh, a PIR pin as an input, the LED pin as an output, and the relay pin as an output. So let's get now into the main loop and see what's happening. So basically, I've got one section that's checking the temperature and then the other section that is running the main code. So what it does is it checks the temperature Obviously, I was checking the temperature once every second during testing, but now once it's live, I check the temperature every 10 minutes. The temperature doesn't change that quickly, so every 10 minutes is more than enough. And once it's done that, it gets the temperature reading, which is a local variable, and goes through the conversion process. This is how you turn the analog reading off the temp pin into degrees Celsius. So I finish up with a float and uh, once I've got that value that's all that this small timing thing does. Every uh, 10 minutes or so it checks 
what the current temperature is. Now you might wonder why I went for four degrees. Well, one of the things that, that you have to remember is that the temperature outside the case is different to the temperature inside the case. Now, even with small electronic components being kept out of the wind, I allowed a couple of degrees uh, higher temperature inside than outside. So what it does now on its main loop, if the temperature is above four degrees, then it'll do something. If the temperature is less than four degrees, it skips everything here. It's not going to do a thing. So if the temperature is greater than four degrees, it uses the timer to see if it is uh, greater than squirt timer. Now you might w w wonder what is going on here. So why do I want to keep checking this? Well, in my previous version, it was just checking things non-stop and there was just no need for it. So uh, it was running way too fast. So now what it does, it says if it's time to do the loop again, check the value of like the squirt state is it greater than zero? If it's greater than zero, turn the LED off and turn the relay off, which of course turns the water off. Set the squirt state to zero. And then what it does is it sets the timer for 25 seconds. Now, the reason I do this is that now and again, my wife wants to get past this dreaded thing and go into the garden to hang the washing up. So all she has to do is she puts her hand in front of the thing, it fires off, and then she knows she's got 25 seconds to walk in front of it before it soaks her. It has got her a few times, but we won't talk about that. So that's what happens if it's currently in a squirting state. If it's not in a squirting state, then the first thing it does is it reads the PIR pin to see if it detects any movement. Now, that gives a squirt state then if the PIR detects movement it'll give a value of 1 otherwise it gives a value of 0. So if it's got a value greater than 0 so I've got a 1 something's moving it turns on the pump turns on the LED and then it turns on the it sets the millis timer for 5000 milliseconds 5 seconds so basically this is going to keep squirting water for five seconds because of course that's going to be caught by the squirt timer here and it's going to turn the unit off. Now obviously if it doesn't sense anything in the system, you know, if no one's in the way, if there's no movement, if the PIR gives a zero then there's no movement and all it does is it sets the millis timer for 0.3 of a second in the future. So basically it's checking every 0.3 of a second if something is running there and once it's fired it waits 25 seconds and that's the end of it. So that's basically how the whole system works. Uh, it is a very very simple system and it seems to work extremely well and the good news about it is that obviously no harm has been done to any cats although there is a rumour that uh, some of them's egos have well and truly been bruised. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, I'll just show you the unit running again. So just a few things about the actual contraption. You can see here is the lead that goes into my garage, which is just over here. You can see it comes in through a little connector. Now you'll notice that I've put a piece of pipe around the PIR sensor. The reason for this was in a previous version when I didn't have this piece of pipe there, I found that even clouds sometimes bring in shadows across the path and things just seem to cause the sensor to trigger at all sorts of weird moments. Also, its field of view was so wide that the um, cat hadn't actually reached the target area before the pump triggered. And I did want the cat to get at least wet a little bit. Now you'll notice that the pump is lower down. One of the reasons for this is 
I have this primitive system. I have a watering can with a pipe that runs down and then the uh, washers. These are just from my local car store. They're just washers off a car. But if you put this unit lower than the level of the water, you finish up getting a bit of a siphon effect that you drain all your water out of your reservoir. Hence, on this version, I've lifted the nozzles up higher. So the pump is down low, the nozzles are high. That means there's always water in the pump and the nozzles aren't acting as a siphon. Uh, the plastic case, you know, I'll be honest, it's some old plastic case from some device. Goodness knows what it was. As you can see, there's bits of insulation tape blocking some of the holes in it. And underneath, I do actually have two holes in the bottom to drain any water that should get in there. I should let you know that I have no electrical components sat on the bottom of the case. They're all mounted up on the side just in case any water did it did get in. That's basically how it works. It sits there on this little stand and where the cats come through into my garden, there's a narrowish area. So by having four jets spread like this, uh, by the time it triggers, usually the cat is somewhere on this first jet which means he's either going to sit there and get squirted, but usually they run forwards through the other two jets, so he gets it twice. It works extremely well, and after the first three months last year of having it out, we didn't have any cats. So that's all how the whole thing works. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, if you do enjoy the video, please click the like and subscribe button. And if you're a cat... Tough luck. Bye for now.